Hello, it's me. I'm live. Yay! Again for another stream of good quality content and so many questions and doing some some art. So yay, Robo is there. Hello. Um, yeah, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, character with blue hair and I will try to do a little more of cutout animation because last time I had a puppet and we did some kind of posing and stuff, but I didn't have any reference. So I just like went out of nowhere and just drew something, which is useful. But now just to get something that could be a little more akin to what you would do, with, what you would do into like production and whatever. Um, I'm going to try to do it with like a little rough drawings I made prior to this uh, Twitch session because I am that much of a prepared person most of the time. Not all the time. So yeah, I have this character. Super cool. Love the hair. I wish my hair could be like that without like it being complicated. And um, right, so I had <clears throat> like a cooking show. Uh, I was already prepared. So I have these little images that I imported in the software. Uh, you can use video tracks, you can use images. Uh, I decided to use images just because since I'm streaming, I wanted it to be lighter, just in case, because we never know. But yeah, so I have these little uh, poses that I drew, and I'm going to use that to pose my character, and it's going to be fun. Um, so one thing that I like to do whenever I use reference is to set up set up a little peg system. Usually I just take it from my library, but now uh, I'm going to build it myself because I'm on streams. I want to show you. Oh, and by the way, this rig, as usual, comes with cool built in compositing that I can just use as I want to have some cool lighting going on like that. So that's a cool compositing thing. If I turn it off, you don't see it. And in terms of rig, it's a pretty uh, easy uh, rig. It's not very complicated. It's pretty basic uh, is what I mean. Uh, there are some little shadows here and there, but I want to be I want to I want to be uh, specific about that. I uh, if you put shadows in a rig, it does get it, it does make it really, really complicated uh, if you don't know where to place them. So I just want to show that this ray has some shadows and yes, they have blurs on them, uh, but they're blur box, so it's very light and there's like five of them. Uh, seven of them, sorry, I don't know how to count. So there's uh, these shadows on the top of the, on the bottom of the boots. And there is the tight shadows and the sleeve and the neck and that's all there's like seven shadows to take care of it's super easy because they are attached to only one piece they will not like spread across different uh pieces all right so that's uh, that is a really important thing to take note uh, it's easy because the piece uh, the shadows are just on one piece it would be harder if they spread across which is why i didn't put any shadows on the torso because then if they spread across different pieces it gets nightmare fuel so like these are pretty easy these are pretty easy super easy and as you can see they don't spread across all of the arm it's only on this piece um of the arm not the whole thing so very important uh it might be uh, it might, there there might be some mistakes in this rig it's the first time i have to animate it so we are going to learn together so um, this is usually what I would do if I had a uh, prof professional rig to give out. I would test it before handing it out, right? Because you don't want the animators to cry when they animate your rig because because you're supposed to make animators happy, not make them cry. Um, right, so I can already see that I forgot to put the peg at the right place for the shadow, but that's okay. Uh, it, it's, it happens. Uh, I'll fix it later. So, um, yeah, so that's it. But uh, for the rest, it's basically just a little note that does decompositing on the character to give it some little lights. Um, and that's it. 
So now I can start and position this character and turn off the compositing because I don't need it. Uh, if I have a Twitter, yes, I do. You can just look it up with that name and you will find it. Um, right. Oh, as usual, the limbs are flipped. So if I move the arm, if I give it a little position or whatever, like this, Uh, I can then copy paste it to the other arm, which is fun. Boop. All you have to do is go get your animation on one arm, copy it, and then paste it right here. Frame it on the moon. I told you there was going to be mistakes with that rig, but we're going to fix them. So uh, that is the thing that we usually do with rigs is uh, the limbs. We're going to group them and copy paste them. So I'm going to show you that real quick. Um, oh, yeah. Now that I look at my post it, I was supposed to show that today. So, yeah. OK, if I have uh, a rig, you're not supposed to group them to group every part of your rig because then it gets hard to composite and use and stuff. But the limbs, it's really great to group them because then I can take this arm and what I'll be able to do is um, take it and then I'll be able to uh, not copy paste it. You never copy. Sorry, there's car making noise. Sorry, I went to close the window. Some people were angry in the street with their car horns, but it's fine now. So what I was about to say is that when you do a rig, never copy paste because then if I use that as my second arm, um, yeah, I forgot to show that before. If I do that, it's great because now both of your arms will do the same thing. All right, <laughs> but like, what if you don't want them to do the same thing? Then you're kind of screwed, right? So never copy paste them. What you need to do is uh, you take it and then you go to the top left and you go to node and you do clone selected nodes drawing only. So the drawings will be the same, but the pegs will remain independent from one another. So they will not move at the same time, which is great. So that's what I'm going to do here. And then you can just uh, slide it here. And then I have two arms. And if I do this to one arm, then I can just take the animation and I can just paste it on the other. In my timeline, there you go. So, so that's great. Whoa, knowledge, yay. <laughs> uh, the reason why we do this, oh my God, it's a T pose. The reason why we do this is that if we have a little mistake in the limb, we don't need to um, uh, fix both. We can just fix one and then copy paste it. It's also when you have a rig that has complex joints, uh, you don't have to do that, that crazy long job twice. You can just do it once and copy paste it. And also in, in animation, it allows your animators to copy paste their limbs, which is amazing. It's really helpful, especially for run and walk cycles or cycles of any sorts. So for example, if I go here and I see that uh, my top arm shadow, I linked it to the wrong piece. I linked my top shadow my, my shadow here, I linked it to the wrong part of the arm. So I can just make a quick, uh, a quick um, little correction here. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> and, um, and then once I made the correction, I can just take my arm and instead of having to fiddle into the other group, like I said, you can just co uh, copy, clone the selected nodes drawings only, just slide it here and there you go. Now the fix is done in both arms. Took five seconds. Amazing. Have a good night of sleep, Mick Wheel. Um, and for those of you wondering, uh, because you're going to see that all over my rig, when there's a static transform node, it's a weird color. It's a weird thing. Maybe you don't know what it is. It's very easy. It's like a peg that you cannot animate. So like this, if I take it off, looks like my arm disappeared, but actually it just went back to its original position. So the static transform, what I did is I 
placed it at minus one into the x axis. So it's like flipped. It's it's flipping your limb basically, and it's flipping your limb um, uh, until forever. Like you can't like edit. You can animate it. So it's bas It's exactly like a peg, but you can't put keyframes on it. It's like a forever change. You know, like a static transformation, like the name implies. Um, yeah, so that's why a lot of the things, like the ears, I also um, do the same trick of copying just the drawings and stuff. So that's uh, pretty much all over the rig. And the other thing that I want to show you too in that rig is all the little dots here. So these little dots are my equivalent of handles. I know lots of people have different ways to do handles. The way I do it is always just little dots of paint. Because as an animator, I know how annoying they can be. And I know sometimes a lot of people love to put crazy cool designs on them. But, you know, it's about the rig, not about the, <laughs> the handles. So what I like to do is have them just be one color. And then I can just take that color and I can, like, turn it off as I animate. If I know I'm not going to need them. So much easier than having all little handles everywhere. And by the way... As usual, these handles will not show up in render. Whoa, how do I do that crazy magic? You just have to use a visibility node. So the, visi the visibility node, what it does is it will uh, allow you to uh, choose if you want this to render in OpenGL or in soft render. Um, all right, so I think that's it for these little explanation. Oh, no, I forgot one thing. Uh, when you do the clone, the kind of like clone drawings only thing, um, I showed it for limbs, but you can also use it for uh, specific pieces. Um, so I used it for the limbs. I used it for the eyes as well. So anything that you know that is going to need lots of animation, uh, you can do it. So let's say that I take my eyes, for example. Uh, right. Oh no, the eyes, it's after. I need to do something about them. Um, yeah, I need to do something with you guys with the eyes before that. Um, but you can also use them for, uh, I use them a lot for clothing. So for example, on only one part of his, on only one of his arms. Um, yeah, on only one of his arms. Um, there is a little glove like that. So if I want it to be into like more three-dimensional look, I can activate the deformer and under, if I pull this uh, in under, I have the same exact piece with the same deformer, but then it gives me like a darker color uh, to get the inside. So I use that trick a lot. Uh, I used it for the arm uh, guards. I used it for the sleeves. I used it for the boots. The boots are probably my favorite part of that rig because if I want to get an angle, I can just do that. And oh, oh, what is this? Oh, I can have like perspective in my boots. So that's cool. Um, and that's because like under this piece, um, if I just do something like this right here. Yeah, so I have the same piece on top of each other so that if I pull the little, <laughs> little dots here you see the other pieces under but if you are careful and you kind of know what you're doing um that's how i get the illusion that it's 3d but it's not magic <laughs> um so into the same idea of this uh, here i have the same cuff but if i if i do it from the top i have this color but i can also do it from under and you're gonna see this shadow is gonna move with it Ooh. That's kind of cool. But now it doesn't make sense, right? Because under should be darker. So I can just click on this and I can just uh, go to my drawing substitutions. And there I have like three versions. I have the original color, like medium color. I have the light color and I have the dark color. So I can just click on what color I want because there are three drawing substitutions. Isn't this? Amazing. I think it is. And I love these little boots. <laughs> Yay. And you know, this is an automatic shadow, but if it doesn't do exactly what I want, uh, scene per scene, I can just go inside the rig 
and turn off the shadow. I think this one, this one. Yeah, I can turn off the shadow, and I, and instead I have a drawing called leg shadow that I can activate. That is basically just a square image that I can, that I can um, use to um, do the shadows, right? But usually, you know, the automatic one is way more than enough, and that's it. So the last thing I have to do, and I'm right on time, I have four minutes left because I wanted to show you the rig for 20 minutes and then start animating. So the last thing I want to I wanted to show you is uh, kind of the way I do, I deal with eyes. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to go get the eye. Where is it? That's why it's important to organize your rig. Now I can just find my eyes pretty easy. I always make them box blue because I have blue eyes. So, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, OK, so I'm going to go in my eye. And you can see here I didn't add the deformers yet because I wanted to show you. So I'm just going to put a display here so that we can isolate just the eyes. <laughs> I know it's ugly. Don't don't judge it too quick. So that's how it looks in the end. But that's because each of these eyelid pieces are there. <laughs> so you have one piece for the eye white, one piece for these little eyelids. And then the eyelids, they have this green thingy here that I can show you any second now. There you go. Uh, so basically this green thing, you don't see it in render, but it hides the eye. So if I want to make a character angry, I can do that. All right, so that's what I usually do. So I'm just, just going to go get the display here and I will um, do the deformers on these lids. It's going to take a second. But what I want to show you is don't, because there's a very cool option called the envelope creator that allows you to create envelopes. And it's pretty automatic. It's pretty cool. Usually it does what you want. Oh, whoa. Well, it's pretty accurate for this one. So usually I use it for a lot of pieces, but for the eye, uh, it's a bit more specific. And I want to show you why. So you see here, this is where the eyelid kind of starts. So I know that I want a point here, then I want one here. So it's very important to be careful about where you put these. And there's no right or wrong. It really depends on your character and how much you want to animate it. So it's a lot of trials and error, right? So um, just going to start quickly with this one here. I'm going to put my um, offset here because I don't want it to be because I don't want my offset to be in my way because the offset has a very, uh, it doesn't allow for smooth uh, animation, right? So I'm going to put it somewhere here that I, that I don't care about. Then I'm going to do a little chain here. And then here I'm going to grab, I'm going to put a point where my eyelid will be. And I might be wrong, right? Because I've never animated that character before, so. Uh, it's all a learning experience, but as you get more comfortable with the style of your show, it just gets easier. In here, I don't put many points because I don't really care because I'm not going to animate that. These points are just there so that when I close my eyelid, like it doesn't pull on this here, because if you just use the curve, it will be a nightmare. Um, right. Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Sometimes, honestly, I don't add this point. Uh, sometimes, most of the time, I just, oops, <laughs> most of the time, I just use uh, the handles to make the eye shape. So it really depends on what you want, right? So, all right, I'm going to do the other eye quickly. You see, it's, it doesn't take ages to rig um, a character like this either. This I don't care. I don't care. I care a little bit. <laughs> Maybe there. OK, and here I'm starting to care because that's important. Maybe I'm going to do something like that. That's perfect. Um, and then I'm going to go grab this here. Sometimes, as I said, you could put a point here in the corner. Uh, I don't want to for this rig because I want it to be easy. And uh, there you go. I have my deformers on my eye. Um, for the eye white, since I care a little uh, since it's uh, less precise than the eyelids. Usually for the eye white, I can get it away with the, uh, the envelope creator. Maybe four points should be enough. Nah, 
yeah, that's a pretty decent job. I mean, I might just like reposition them at them a little bit, but um, yeah, that that that's that's okay. Considering they're going to be hidden by like the eye shape anyway, so yeah, that works. Okay, good. I have my eyes here. Uh, for it's done for the eyebrow, uh, it's pretty easy. Um, all you need to do is uh, put a curve. So yay. Curve a loop. That's what I do. Oh, it's already there. Huh. Go figure. I thought I removed them before the stream, but I, I guess I missed that one. And now, beautiful, uh, I added the deformers on one eye. All I have to do is copy this one. Uh, of course, before I copy it, I need to add a keyframe. That's important. Remember that before you copy your limb, put keyframes on everything. <laughs> Otherwise, they won't be. Uh, it won't work. So I'm going to put my keyframes. Thank you. And then I will copy it. Drawings only. And then huzzah. You, oh, <laughs> there you go. I just need, uh, of course, it's copied. So I just need to take care of the eye after the, the pupil, I mean, and just place it here. Don't forget the highlight. There you go. Amazing. Okay, so now we're ready to start. Is it exciting? I'm excited. Uh, disclaimer, I am not a, cu a cutout animator. Like, well, I am a little bit, but like, it's not my expertise. So we're going to do this together. It's going to be a learning experiment. Um, I mean, I did animate cutout in the past, but it wasn't my, my uh, nine to four job for like three years, right? So, um, but we're going to learn together. It's going to be fun. Get the arm down. There you go. All right, so I had my little poses that I imported in the software. They are here. I don't know how many poses we'll have time to do, but uh, at least one, that would be great. It's a pretty extreme one as well. So of course, if you start out with your rig, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't advise you start with a pose that is that crazy. This is a very hard pose to get out of your rig uh, because it's got like perspective, it's a bit weird. Sometimes like this could be an easier pose because it's more streamlined and uh, easier, right? But let's go with some challenge because it's a stream and it's there to, I'm there to make some mistakes and learn with you people, yay. I'm <laughs> going to be having a galaxy brain by the end of the stream. Yeah, maybe, but, but, but that's how we learn. Galaxy brain is fun. All right, so I have my rig. What I'll, what I want to do since that rig doesn't have any master control. Wait, no, it does have master. No, it doesn't have master controllers. I forgot to import them. Oh no, <laughs> uh, but that's fine. I'm going to use an older method to animate. Just going to get my rig and I'm going to keep a pose of my character like this. I'm going to keep a keyframe away. I also keep one at the end because sometimes I mess up the other one as well. So I keep I keep a bunch of keyframes with my original so that I can like keep going back at it if I need to. Uh, this is a very easy rig. There's only the quarter front. I didn't do any other uh, views because I knew I wouldn't need them. <laughs> So yeah, it's just quarter front. So let's see how far we can go with just a quarter front uh, rig. Exciting. <laughs> there we go. So first I'm going to take my rig and when you pose a rig for a cutout, um, one of the most important thing is start broad. Like don't start by take, doing, doing like, oh, I'm going to take the foot and I'm going to put the foot there <laughs> and then I'm going to put the arm here. Like, no, that's not what you do. You need to start with the whole rig. So uh, usually you'll have like this uh, peg on top of your group that is there to position your character in your scene. Uh, it's already kind of the same, the good size. So I don't have much to do with it. Maybe, maybe place it there because you know, it's near. But then what you want to do is go get your master and just uh, make sure that everything has a keyframe. Also, my pegs are not all named because uh, it's not a finished rig. Because if I get rid of the peg, then I don't want to have wasted time naming it, you know. 
So then I put a keyframe on, a keyframe on everything. And then it start, it's time to pose the character. So now everybody has their own technique and everybody, every studio has their own technique. That's why when you're a cutout animator, you might be an expert on a certain show. Then if you move to another studio, sometimes you have to relearn uh, things. And that's normal because there are so many different ways to animate, different subtleties, su subtleties and stuff. Um, all right, so uh, because, yeah, so the way I like to animate is I'll start with uh, the feet because I want to plant them in the ground and then I'm going to make the body follow um, legs. So I'm going to take the bo my, my bottom uh, part here and Wait, no, wait, ah, I want to center my, uh, wait here, there you go, yeah. Um, can you please cooperate? Thank you. So I'm going to put my torso here, but then I'm going to start with the legs. And I will also lock my reference. And oh, I forgot about the reference. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say before. The reference, I always give it a peg. And uh, two pegs, so one peg will be to be able to bring it in on top of my character. So if I go here in my top view, I want to take the ma the maintain size tool and just bring it on top of my camera because then if I make it transparent, I know that even if my character has some z-depth information, um, I will still be able to have my reference on top because sometimes like you have pieces that go on top and it's a nightmare. So I usually do that. And I will also give it another peg that I use just to like put in place my uh, to be able to have my reference in the corner of my scene instead. Sometimes when you have a crowded scene or like more of an, uh, or of an emo emotion scene, you don't want to trace, you want to feel your, your storyboard, right? So I put it in the corner like that if I need to. Um, or I can just um, keep, if I deactivate it, it's going to go back to the real size. So uh, these two, the little pegs, usually they are templated into my library and I just bring them in. Like I don't even need to build it. It's that fast. I'm looking, f so HMR has a question. So I'm looking for animators to interview for my YouTube channels. Animate Educated. Thanks. Oh, well, you can reach out to Toonboom and maybe, maybe they can uh, help you out with that. So yeah, feel free to reach out to the team. Um, good, good, good. Um, so that's done. My reference is done. I'm going to lock it in place so that I don't move it. And I actually want it to be behind and I want it to be fully opaque for now. There you go. Go. Okay. Mm. I forgot what I was about to say. Ah, maybe it will come back. So then, uh, when you pose the leg, like I said, don't start with the foot. Even though it's tempting because having a planted foot is hard. Uh, there's many ways to go about the planted foot. I don't think it's going to be the subject for today. Um, but maybe for another stream. So. Um, when you use the technique with the group, that is the one thing that is very important. The animation, you, the animation, you have to keep it within the group. Because if you go up the hierarchy here, I'm going to go up foot, then get the bottom leg, then get the thigh, then get here, right? But if I go up again, I don't see anything. And then when I go up again, it's because I have the group peg selected. So typically what I do with these is I turn them red just so that I know that I, I shouldn't animate them. Like in my timeline, they show up as these red uh, lines of like, please don't. It helps. But like usually these pegs are there just to kind of position your limb um, in your 3D rotation, for example. Or here uh, I made the flip uh, with that peg. But usually we don't animate these. We keep the animation inside the leg. This way you can copy paste it to the other side because you cannot copy paste from one group to the other. Uh, from one peg here to the other, you have to do it from one group uh, to the other. So that's really important. So remember that. So that's why I'm going to go to my leg. I'm going to go up, up, up. I'm going to stop here because I don't want to exit the group. And I'm going to start to pose my limb. But when I pose my limb, I want to start with broad, like the whole leg. And then I'm going to move it like that Boop. Um, to make it fit as most as possible of my reference, my rough sketch. Uh, I won't start to play with deformer just yet. I'm going to try to keep it as simple 
uh, when I animate, I start with the pegs and I do the deformers after because I treat them like a new, um, I treat them like a new um, drawing, drawing, yeah? So like if I was just testing out, I wouldn't draw a new leg if I didn't have deformers, right? If I was in another software that doesn't have them. But um, yeah, so then I'm going to take this and I'm going to twist the leg a little bit. And the foot, I might do it, but I might not because I know that I'm going to have to reshape the leg because there's foreshortening going on. So I'm going to talk to you about foreshortening in a moment, right? So now if I have this leg, um, I'm going to uh, make it a bit more um, logical with how the guy is going to move. So I can take these uh, and I can just start to move my leg, right? So this is something I would do a bit later, but since we're on stream, I just want to show you like a beautiful leg here at least. Um, there is foreshortening in the leg, so there's many ways to go about that. It depends how extreme it is. Since it's a bit subtle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the peg to make it a bit smaller instead of having to move many different pieces with the deformers and stuff. But here, as you can see, if I try to make it shorter, it's kind of weird, right? So with the pegs, remember that when you animate the square box, this little thing, it's always aligned to your interface. So like, if I want to make that leg shorter, like in, in that direction, uh, it, ooh, it doesn't work. But if I rotate my screen using alt control or, or command alt on a Mac, option command, uh, yeah, option command on a Mac, yeah. Or control alt on a PC, I can rotate my screen. And remember the the, the box is always, um, it's always like aligned with your interface, right? So no matter how I move it, it's always going to be a square. Rectangle, right? Because a square is a, a rectangle. No, a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. And then if I do this, now it's more logical. So I'm going to give it a, a slight, slight um, um, foreshortening uh, way here. I don't want to do it too much because then the cuffs will start to look weird, the cuffs of the boots. And this also depends on the style of your rig. I usually do my rigs without lines because then I can get away with more <laughs> easily. But if, if you have a line, sometimes if you squash it with a peg, it looks, it's going to look weird and the line is going to get thinner and thinner, which is why usually we use deformers because deformers will keep the same line weight, right? I can show you that with the nose here because the nose has a line. Like very few things have lines. I might, yeah, I need to put a line on the sleeve as well because, because otherwise we lose them. I had a slight one when we were in render, but I might make it a bit more obvious. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. Um, Right, so if I take the nose and I make it and I foreshorten it with the peg, you see the line is getting thinner, which is not something we always want. But if you get a deformer instead and I do the same thing, you see this, the line size always... <laughs> what the heck is going on? The line size is always the same. So that's sometimes why we prefer to use deformers over pegs. But if it's subtle, uh, go ahead and use the peg because it's quicker, it's easier and it's healthier in general. Okay, let me see what the chat has to say. Um, thank you. I like this color palette too because there's blue and blue is nice. Uh, Jim of the gym, I have no idea what you're talking about. This is a unique character. Um, and yeah, thank you, Isaac. I, I, I have a passion for cold colors. Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it looks really great. Thank you, Toon Boom. <laughs> um, right, so now uh, to make it look a bit more like a foreshortening, what I can do also is foreshorten it, foreshorting, make the leg <laughs> shorter, but just the leg, like not the boot, not the cuff part of the boots. So that is also something I can do. So, right, so. Uh, but all, like I said, always start with the peg and then make your way uh, to the deformers. So then as I do my foreshortening, I will also need to adjust my deformers. I won't be too precise about it for now. I'm going to keep it simple. 
because like I don't know if I'm gonna keep that position or not, right? So uh, I'm keeping it very subtle, very light, uh, not fiddling with the details. Like you know, the legs they can meet up later. I don't care for now. Um, and then of course the feet has to follow, uh, just like a drawing substitution. Uh, you, yeah, you have to treat it like a drawing substitution. If you flip your pieces, be careful because then they won't. Uh, because then they won't uh, in between well uh, if, with the other poles. So if you flip it, just make sure that you don't flip it until the next pose, right? Because you don't want your animation to go like this, whoop, <laughs> when you animate. Sometimes it's fine. It's just a bit more complicated. So like if it's not necessary, like don't. So I'm going to put my foot back here. Uh, can you cooperate? Thank you. I'm going to take my foot, going to place it here. Um, I know that in my next pose, it's also oriented on that side, so I will flip it because it's fine. And then just to make it fit a little bit more, I'm going to use my deformers to um, align it with my foot, right? So then again, I'm not being super precise here. I'm just, be, I'm just making it uh, a quick, quick shape uh, to make it work. And the way I rigged these foot, these feet uh, is this is the same as this. So if I take this foot here and I go into the deformation group and I I remove the deformer animation, it goes back to the front pose, right? So this was made with the deformer points. So that's why uh, even if it's uh, relaxed uh, like this, um, if you look here, the artwork it's mostly like very simple shape so there's four corners but i have five deformer points so why do i have this deformer point that can be a bit annoying sometimes this is because if i need to have a profile foot these two points are going to be the tip of my foot so that's why if i go back here you see here these two points are the tip of my foot so that's why when i go to do the other drawing here um i know that if i need to these two points are the tip of my foot, so I'm trying to keep it logical uh, with how I animate, just so you know. And then I'm just going to try to get that foot a little more like uh, like a, an actual foot. <laughs> this is why when some people say that cut out animation, you don't need to know how to draw, and I strongly disagree. Uh, if you want to work on um, on um, high end cutout production, you do need to have a very, very good draftsmanship because with the envelope, it's so easy to go off model. So I'm not, yeah, I don't want to discourage anyone. Just being realistic, if you want to work on complex cutout shows, you do need good draftsmanship because it's basically drawing with envelope deformers. Um, so that's why we have a strong rough under our animation. And then for the boot, and and then again, just as a, just to say it again, um, um, what I'm doing here, like taking care of the deformers, I would never do that until I was done with the rest of the posing. But since we are on stream, I'm doing it like I'm gonna concentrate myself on one limb and maybe do the other after. All right. So um, then for the boot, I'm gonna take the cuff. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. Oh, wait, did I take just the cuff or the whole leg? Okay, it's just a cuff. I'm going to bring it up a little bit like this. Then I'm going to use my amazing deformers uh, to get the look I want. So I'm going to start with the top layer. I'm going to place it here, place it here. Um, and I'm going to start to give it kind of a little, uh, kind of a neater look uh, to draw my boots. So then again, it's it's like you have to consider your deformer like a new drawing. Like if you were animating without deformers, you would need to draw to make a new drawing. Um, so that's why I'm being precise like that. Then with the inside of the boot, I will also take the deformer points and I will um, be mindful though that this is a pretty extreme uh, for shortening. Like usually it's, it would be quicker and more subtle than that. But I just want to show that uh, this technique can be very powerful. You can do lots of uh, looks with it. And I know that for now it looks like this is too thin, but uh, I'll fix it. Uh, it's going to take a little moment, but uh, I'll fix it. And um, 
like that. So now you can see also that my leg here is being cut off. This is because of a special piece that I have in my rigs usually. Um, yeah, Link, this, yeah, this character only has it into this boot here. But sometimes I put it other places. It's like a cutter that I had here. So here, so if I hide my boot cuffs here, you see that with that there's a thing cutting my leg in half. So that's my leg cutter. Um, I'm going to show you here. Leg cutter. Yeah, this thing. It's basically just a drawing here. But like the, if I move that drawing, it just like cuts the leg. <laughs> so that's how I get the kind of thickness that goes into the layer of the boots. So I'm going to show you this by reactivating. I call them flop because I lost my English when I did that rig. Instead of calling them cuffs, I call them flop because... Because, don't try to understand, sometimes my brain just does this kind of stuff. Um, oh, I see questions in the chat. I'm going to catch up in a little moment. I just want to finish this part. Be, be patient, I'm coming. Um, yeah, so the leg cutter here, I'm going to activate the former. Usually I would add a little dot here to select it. I forgot. I'm gonna. I just wrote it on my post-it, so I would need to add that before I give it to my animator. So it's important to test your stuff before you hand it out. Uh, and by the way, animator, if you receive a rig that is not perfect, don't be too mean either, because it's hard to not forget everything in a rig, right? Um, oh, but that being said, when I was taking care of a rig team in my previous life, when, before I worked at Toon Boom, when I had a rigging team, uh, I did make a little sheet of paper with checkboxes telling them to verify specific things. So if these were not done and my animators complained, I would get I would get uh, less patient with my team. But if it was something very hard to like very, or very hard to 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 not forget, like I would be like, OK, it's it's everybody makes mistakes and it's fine. But if you are prone to making mistakes, make a list. Lists save your life. They save my life all the time. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to take that part. And since I'm cutting away the boot, the, the leg, it looks like my boot is a bit thicker. So that's how I deal with it. And um, I'm going to make it a bit more precise, maybe like this, a bit more round. Uh, get that leg. A little, yeah, that leg is supposed to be a bit thinner. <laughs> um, like this. And that's it. So I'm going to have my leg here animated. Just like that. I try when I when I do my, my when I do my redraws, I try to keep my legs still kind of aligned with where the the pivot point of my drawing is. That's very important because you still want it to bend well. You see now it's not uh, it's not perfectly aligned, but it's kind of okay for what I want. Um, there you go. So I have kind of a. Um, I have a, can you please cooperate? Yeah, I have my drawing here. And of course, if I was making, if I was paying more attention and wanted it to be perfect, then um, uh, I'm going to go get my points and I will, I would follow my rough way better than what I did here. Blame the stream. So actually my leg should be a bit more like this. It's fine, I'm just going to replace the cuff here. There you go. Ah, that's better. Okay. Uh, need my leg cutter. I really need to put a little um, things to go get it. There you go. And now I have my beautiful leg. And when I turn off my drawing, you're going to have it be drawn. All right, so let me catch on with the chat and see if somebody had a question. Let's see. Um, hello, hello. Are the former best to be placed around out of artwork you preferring? Uh, for the deformers, it really depends. If I had a character, um, if I had an art style, here I can show you. 
Uh, for me, I like them when they're kind of pretty close to the shape, but that's because I have thin line arts and usually I don't even have line art. Uh, I like to do uh, lineless uh, animation and rigging a lot. That's my, that's just the style that I like. But it just depends on your shape. I'm gonna show you this pretty quickly. Mm. There you no, there you go. Okay, perfect. So if you if this was the shape you wanted to put a deformer on, if the shape had no um first if the shape is very sharp, that also changes how you put it. So the thing I can give you as an advice is try it. Uh, it's always better. It, it, it's just better when you have experience and you know what you want. So, but I'm still going to show a little bit of options there because we have a bit of time. Whoop. There we go. There you go. And there you go. So if you have a very sharp uh, shape, you want to put them in the corners. That's for sure as much as possible. But then if you want it to be in or out of the shape, uh, you really have to just try it. Uh, if you have a textured line, sometimes it also makes a difference. Um, but yeah, it really depends. Whoa, it really depends on your shape and what you're going to do with it. Um, if you have a very, very thick line art, however, uh, that is really important that you put the deformer in the center of your line because if it's a thick line art, yeah. If it's a thick line art, you kind of want your deformer to be very in the center of your line art. Uh, just so that it moves better when you, oops, <laughs> when you uh, move your line like that. It, it really works better. But usually line art, sometimes they're so thin or if there's no line art, uh, it just depends on what uh, is gonna be better for your thing. I hope it answers the questions. I don't know. Uh, oh, wait, I did forget one thing. I did find out with the years that when I use a curve envelope, you know, when I do a curve with an envelope, I do prefer sometimes to put it, to stop it before, or like to stop it after the shape. I just think it bends better. I, I don't know. Like, I sometimes I will put it a bit after, like if I'm doing hair or something. Wait, did I do it? I think I did it in that character. Let me see your hair. There you go. Uh, yeah, I did. Okay, I did. So I'm going to show you. So like for the hair here, um, I the deformer is like, I, I, I stopped it just a bit before just because I think it gives it more of a puff, puffy little um, rounder, softer look. Uh, if the hair were pointier, sometimes I would put it um, more toward the edge. And here I have the little ponytail. This is a bit of a tricky one. I don't know if I'm going to keep it there, but like I... <laughs> I, I went very, very lazy on that. I just kept the same drawing and I put a curve envelope here. So I started the I started the offset really near here. But then instead of making it follow the the the, the ponytail, because because this was happening and I'm too lazy to fix it. Um, what I did instead is um, take the deformer and I placed it here instead. I just think it, it was a bit smoother. <laughs> but you know, sometimes you just have to try it, especially with complex shape. Sometimes it's it's not what you think. Like this is not good, but this works great. I can even give him like long, longer hair. Whoa. It's a real ponytail now. That's kind of cool. So yeah, the power of the formers, am I right? Um, just going to reset that the former. There you go. And um, yeah, so yeah, I hope that answers the questions. <laughs> Magnificent. Thank you, Zfish face, for this lovely compliment. Um, right, okay, so back to uh, <laughs> what I was doing before time is running out we have 10 minutes 10 minutes left so don't forget to ask questions because that's what these streams are for they're for you to learn more and for me to also learn more because when you answer questions you actually learn a bunch of stuff which is pretty cool Uh, 
sorry, that's my boots. I don't like. Um, yeah, I don't like how the leg cutter is a bit too uh, not curvy enough, so I'm just gonna curve it more. And I think that'll be it for that part. Perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna go do the other leg. It's leg day today, people. Um, here and then as usual you start with the top of the leg and then you move it so that it fits you want to place the knee where the knee should be then you move it that's a very big leg um you know my drawing was not perfect either but you know it's fine i'm gonna i'm gonna deal with it I'm doing this very quickly here. Because such is a life of a live streamer. Okay, and then now that my things are kind of positioned in the right way, I'm gonna start to do these little deformer thingies. You might see that I don't have perfectly rotating, rotating limbs. That's because I hate to do that. <laughs> it's just too long so i went lazy on that rig so um if it was for a production i would have been less i would have been more like uh, a better person and actually gave these perfect circle but i really didn't feel like it and you know it's great because then i can just make pointy elbows and pointy elbows are pretty cool you know that's kind of cool so it just means that each time I move my arm, I'll have to put the deformers in the right place. But, you know, uh, it's something that I chose to go with, right? It's it's my choice. <laughs> I do what I want. Um, but don't go in a studio making that unless they ask, they ask you to. Uh, it's always better to have rotating joints, right? But if you're in a hurry, just know that this exists. You can, you can make limbs very quickly that are a bit sharper on the edges. But then just remember that, you know, anyway, when you animate even with round limbs, you still have to fiddle with the corners like so I just thought whatever it works. I like it. <laughs> it makes me happy to do this very quickly. Um, there you go. So little explanation. I thought it was important to say. Uh... So you said you're, you mostly work on lineless rig. What's your process for doing that compared to rig with lines? So the process is that I don't have to do auto patch system, like when you have lines that combine and I can get away with a lot, like for these leg or like for, for the four shirting or whatever, like uh, I can just, I can just use the shapes instead of having to worry about the lines connecting. But don't get me wrong, having lineless rig is also a nightmare for lots of things. Like what happened if I put the the sleeve on top of the of the torso, right? You lose it. So it work. It doesn't work for every types of show. You you have to. It it, it if you are going with lineless rig, you will need to spend more time. Uh, working on your shadows, working on like the posing to make it dynamic and not having having it be um, too static. So it really needs to be very, very dynamic. So like when I do this here, when like, um, yeah, if you want, yeah, it's just it's just when you have layering of your pieces, it can get a bit harder. Uh, so that's why for some pieces, I sometimes add lines. So. Um, like the nose, for example, because if it doesn't have a line or like the, the, the ears. Um, so it does, it does come with its fair share of challenges. It's just challenges that I want to deal with, that I don't care dealing with. Because... Because, because, because I, I it's also a style that I really am a fan of. Like, I, I think it's pretty. I love it. <laughs> Lightless means it's easy to lose track of what's in a front limb and what's a back one. Yeah. Which is why, for example, I use lots of color coding like that. So, uh, like, if if I want my character to lean forward or something, I can, like, do this and then just take the head and bring it there as well. But, like, there's a color for inside of my torso. 
that I can use a lot to sh to fake depth, which is not something you would need if you had lines. And it's also that you have to be careful, so like no no things that are the same color can be too close to one another. So so you have lineless only works if you design with the rig in mind because it's very easy for a lineless rig to become very complicated, right? So I designed that character knowing that I would rig it. <laughs> so that's that's a big difference. And, oh yeah, I don't know what I did. I think I made a mistake. Yeah, I think I repainted the, the hands by mistake, but usually for the hand, uh, these are a thing that I will always give them a line. Uh, it's super important because, um, yeah, because, um, since they are so intricate and you draw them all the time, they do need a line. So usually what I'm going to do is have them like that and I will give them a line color, which will usually look good when it's in front of the torso because it's uh, really important. So maybe something a bit lighter. I know, I know the line work is supposed to be darker than the inside work, but that's just something I like also. Sometimes it's when the outline is more pale than the uh, inline. It just depends on what you want. So sometimes, yeah, I'll add a line like that or like I'm going to make it darker so you see it on stream. But uh, yeah, so I would color the line art uh, of the hands. That's for sure. That is really important um, for it to work. There, so now if my hand is in front of my arm, then at least I know that there's a difference between my hand and my arm because hands are intricate and you have to be careful with them. Um, right, so like some parts will have lines, but so yeah, it's, it can be a bit different, uh, difficult, but it's, it's a challenge that I like and that I chose to go with because I think it looks good. Um, then I'm just going to go work on that little cuff again. Oh, one thing that is important also to note is that when you work with, um, when you work with uh, very detailed pieces, sometimes your envelopes are going to do something weird. Um, so don't forget that you can use a, a cutter on your shadows on your shadows, on your uh, deformers, I mean. Have I been saying shadows this whole time? I meant deformers. Um, oops. Please work. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you that in a, in a second. I just want to finish this cuff here. I'm going to do the same trick I did with the other one. I'm going to give it a little depth like this. And uh, yeah, okay, so what I want to show you is that when you have an envelope, sometimes if you bend a deformer too much, it's going to look weird. There you go. So it's going to look weird um, here if, if it's very precise. So that's why my deformers, they all have the... Uh, where, where can't I see? Oh yeah, there you go. So if I have very precise deformers, so I have my shape, right? But then around my shape, I will always have a um, a green mask at the surrounding, so that uh, I have a video about it that you can go check out if you if you'd rather, because it's a bit easier. I will link it here. Um, so yeah, it's 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 to prevent your deformers from looking weird. So. Yeah, I'm going to sh sh share you that right here. And um, yeah, I think after that will be out of time unless there is another question that I can help you with. Um, right, so I'm going to link you the, the video right here. Do, 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 do. So that's for the envelope. Oh, wait, there's a question. I tend to hear in rigging not to make a rig too heavy, avoid overusing deformers, yeah, but when I see rigs, other makes, they don't seem to be that limited. Limited... Um, oh, you want to see more compositing fish face? 
that's cool because compositing is my favorite thing. Yay! Uh, but when it turns, because rigging, I think, I think it's not about making them not heavy. It's about making them as heavy as you need. Uh, rigs are often too heavy for what they were for what they should be. That's true. But like at the end of the day, also you don't have to compromise what animators need to animate, right? So with how with where animation is going, there's gonna be needing more. Like every piece, no, like nowadays it's not like some years ago every piece having a, a deformer would have been problematic but nowadays it it's slowly becoming the norm and that's okay because i i know it makes it, it makes it heavier but like 3d animation is not what it was like 10 years ago right so at one point also computers do get more car powerful and stuff so what i mean by that is that if your rig needs to be complicated make it complicated but if it's a preschool gig with very easy characters you don't need to over rig your character usually in the industry what we say is rig, you rig your character for for it to be able to do like 70 percent of like the storyboard or whatever because then if you rig your character rig character thinking oh but what if there is a fish lens scene that is like top top uh, bottom camera and like super complex perspective how am i going to do it like you can figure it out when that scene happens right so rig your rig your your, your rig for like doing like 70 easily 70 percent of like what the show is about and then if you have special scenes you can just make us you can just edit your rig and have a special rig for that scene uh, which is usually what they do into different shows so when there's a very very steep camera angle they're going to have maybe like a rig just for like they, like like if your character is just walking uh, and it's uh, the camera is on top of him. So like you have like the shoulders here and like the foot down. Like don't rig your character so that it fits this view. Because that view you're going to get it like once in the whole season. So like uh, that's something you have to consider. And in terms of making it heavy. Um, I mean if every piece needs an envelope. I mean, every piece needs an envelope. Like, I'd rather have a heavy rig that my anim animators can animate than having a light rig where my animators lose half of their time redrawing drawings all the time. Because I did, I did hear like a couple of weeks before, a couple of weeks back, people were saying, "Oh, well, putting the form result sleeve is useless. If an animator needs a drawing, they can just redraw it." I'm like, "Yeah, but you know, like maybe it's heavier with the formers, but come on, man, it takes like five seconds to just do this, and then it tweaks." Because the problem with drawing substitutions is that they don't tween. All right. For this character, I'm using a deformer mouth. Um, that is overkill for most production. That is true. For most production, you can just do a lip sync that is hand drawn, drawing per drawing. Um, for most shows, it's gonna work. So that, that is the, that is maybe one thing I could say. Like like sometimes you don't need to have a all deformer mouth. It's really fun. I love to have this type of mouth. By the way, I just stole it from my other rig. Like, you know, the elf boy with the red hair. It, I just I just stole that mouth. Because you can do that. It's uh, You just have to be a very good surgeon. So, like, I love... Because I have a 3D... Yeah, okay, I have to, pre I have to specify. I used to be a 3D animator before. So, like, that's why I kind of... Well, I went paper... I learned on paper, I did 2D, then I went to do 3D for like three years, and then I came back to 2D because I do like 2D better. But, you know, there's something about having blend shapes and just being able to, you know, like work that smile a little bit more. Uh, I, I like that. That's something that I like to be able to do that. Um, yeah, so I don't think we have any more questions. Uh, if some people want to do com want to see compositing, maybe next time I'm, I'm gonna do show some little tricks about compositing because compositing is fun. And I really hope that you had fun today. I sure did. Uh, before I go, I want to show you how uh, smooth and poofy these hair can be because I really love them. Look at the bounciness of this hair. It's so cool. And uh, with that, if we don't have any other questions, I will see you next stream. I really had fun and I hope you did and see you later. Bye bye.